Hi everyone, Carlos's Diner here, and here I am back with a new Lego cut. No, Lego mock. This mock, based on the second Muppet feature film, The Great Muppet Caper, based on the film's climax. I'm dubbing this mock as Race for the Diamond because that's pretty much what this what this mock is. A race for the diamond. Basically, um. The story behind this LEGO mock is that I was wondering what new LEGO mock that I should build. Because I, I, I've done a few LEGO minifigure customs, but I haven't, like, done a LEGO mock in, well, a, approximately a month, at least. So I, I, I looked back at my previous LEGO mock, and it was, uh, I think it was Huxley's Castle from The Adventures of Elmo and Grouchland. Here is what it looked like. And yes, I did do a review on it, so I do recommend you check that out, that out as well. Anyway, as I said before, this is based on the Great Muppet Caper, but but specific. And while it is on the climax, it's specifically based around the main build. I mean, is based around what the Muppet Wiki refers to as the Happiness Hotel courtesy car, though it's more of a bus than a car. I have to be honest. Now, before I get started on this LEGO mock review, I just have to be clear. I hated building the courtesy car. It was just so hard to build. Like, there was a lot of stuff. It took me two entire days. Two days just for me to complete this LEGO build. Ugh. And it was just so complex. It was so hard trying to get all the... Right, details that appeared on the bus in the film. Oh, I just hated it. I just hated having to build it. Uh, but I, I, I do think it came out pretty well. At, at, for, at least uh, of what I could build it out to be. The courtesy car, I mean. Not 100% accurate, but still accurate enough that you can recognize what it's supposed to be from the film. But anyway, I think I've rambled on enough. Let's just get on with the Lego mock. Of course, we all start off with the minifigures. Now, the minifigure selection for this mock was very challenging, specifically because I originally wanted to include all of the Lego Muppet minifigures that I had in my collection, AKA pretty much all of the minifigures that I have were pretty much the entire Lego Muppet group minus uh, Statler, Waldorf, and Janice. Uh, Statler and Waldorf because they never appeared on the bus at any point in the film. And, and were not part of the climax. And Janice because I don't have her minifigure. But, yeah, it was very challenging because, uh... There were, like, a ton of minifigures, honestly, as part of the Lego Muppets minifigure series. But, but I, I decided to just have fe just feature four of the minifigures. Specifically, Kermit, Piggy, Fozzie, and Gonzo, because they were all main characters in the film, The Great Muppet Caper. And also because Lego would not realistically have, like, almost their entire Muppets minifigure series in this size set, realistically. So yeah, um, I, 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 I really wanted to feature all of the Lego Muppet minifigures in the mock, but I decided not to because... There were just way too many minifigures for this sort of mock. So, yeah. So yeah, we basically have four of the main characters. Kermit, Piggy, Fozzie, and Gonzo, as I stated before. That, are, well, that, that were for the film. It's, it's, a, it, it's an understandable minifigure selection. So, yeah, there's nothing too special with them. They're all just the same minifigures that were part of the minifigure series back in the day. So yeah, nothing too special. The only real special minifigure, of course, is going to be the quote-unquote human character that is included. And when I mean human character, I mean a type of character that LEGO will realistically not put in a LEGO Muppet set because, no, because when it comes to Muppets and Sesame Street, they only care about promoting such merchandising Muppets. None of the human characters, sadly. And B, I also mean the film's main antagonist. In this case, 
It's Nicholas Nicky Holiday. Well, there are a ton of black minifigure pieces that you can use for his character. Specifically, if you want to recreate his uh, burglar outfit that he wears in the film's climax when attempting to steal the fabulous baseball diamond, aka the titular diamond that I've dubbed for this Lego mock. But I decided to choose this uh, classic minifigure torso with zippers on it because his burglar outfit featured some zippers of what I can of, of what I've noticed images online in the film what I've noticed and I, I thought it looked pretty okay I mean I wouldn't say it's 100% accurate but I think that the, the zippers on pr printing on the tour on this classic minifigure torso look pretty good I don't know wh where the minifigure torso comes from but I do know it's a from a very old Lego minifigure. And for and to make sure that his legs are not plain black, uh, I basically used the printed legs from the Imperial Gunner because I don't want boring black legs. And also you can tell like the difference in pr minifigure printing in, over the years with both printing on the legs and torso, so that's kind of cool. The, he uses the same head as the, he used the head, um, from, what was it called? The Resistance X-Wing pilot from Poe Dameron's, uh, the Black Leader X-Wing that was released for The Force Awakens back in 2015. Which, funny enough, very coincidentally, the Sam Slees minifigure custom that I made over a year ago for my Lego follow that bird mock they made over a year ago he has that same head I use that same head for him so uh, yeah that was quite the coincidence as I had as I had just realized so yeah very funny that was honestly just pure coincidence I was just trying to recreate the actor's look by the minifigure heads that I had in my collection and I realized Good gravy. His head works perfect for both Sam and Nikki. <laughs> and the last minifigure piece that you're going to need for him is the uh, uh, Brick Suit Guy's hair piece from a from Lego minifigure series 18. I, I think that was the minifigure series. I, I, you could use uh, any other hair pieces, I mean, uh, for him. But that's the hairpiece I decided to use for him for his minifigure custom here. And his accessory is basically a pistol piece, which is supposed to represent the gun that he wields when he's taking Kermit hostage. But yeah, um, over eight minutes into this LEGO review, and uh, we haven't even got to the main builds yet. But yeah, um, that's enough for the minifigures. On to the builds. Starting off with the side builds, First on the right, we have Piggy's, whoops, motorbike, it wants to fall over, darn it, that she uses when she's escaping the cops during the climax. It's not the correct color, I have to admit, but, that, but, but then again, um, it's the only Lego motorcycle, not counting any police motorcycles, that I have in my Lego collection. So I have to work with what I've got. Uh, so... Yeah, but it still works out. I mean, at least it's a, it's a motorcycle for Piggy. Get that out of the way. Very iconic vehicle she uses. The quote-unquote side build here for this is actually the case that houses the titular fabulous baseball diamond that is in this the title for this mock, the uh, race for the diamond as I've titled it. Basically, um, it's a very simple build. It, the, the floor is just, the, the top, the plate is just meant to assemble the, uh, floor of the Mallory Gallery. You have a stand for the, uh, Fabulous Baseball Diamond itself, which is just a simple, um, Lego, uh, clear diamond piece, so nothing too special with it. Put that back in the stand. 
And, uh, something cool that, um, basically this, uh, clear, um, I'm not sure what to call it, pentagon, I guess, shaped dome that basically goes over and houses it. It's basically supposed to resemble the, uh, case that the diamond is housed in, in the film. Yeah, it's uh, on a swivel mechanism right there, so that it can open and close very easily. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Just the fabulous baseball diamond itself. And now on to the main build. The Happiness Hotel Courtesy Car. Which it should be called the Happiness Hotel Courtesy Bus, because it's not even a car. It's just a modified double-decker bus, but... I digress. Anyway, as I said before, this thing was a pain to build. As I said before, it took me two days to build it. And it was a, a pain. But anyway, um... <clears throat> let's do a 360 on this thing. Well, maybe not 360, but just views from each side of it. Here's the back. The other side of it. And the front. Starting off with the exterior, um... This is the front of the, of the bus. Basically, I, I, I th this was the first part of the bus that I actually worked on, and I wanted to get it as, uh, accurate as possible to how it looked in the film. Got the side. Got opening door. Basically, um, I wanted an opening space where you could sit Gonzo on there, like in the film, specifically during the Electric Mayhem's nightlife sequence. Got some big headlights connected there. A, uh, license plate. Got a grill, the little bumpy thing at the front. I did the other side too, so I could do it symmetrical. Another opening door. A complaint that I have for the front is the windows don't go across. Like, uh, I, I tried to find uh, window pieces that would like go all the way across, like in the film. But sadly, um, it only has like these very tiny, teeny sections. So yeah, I'm not very accurate, sadly. But I have to work with what I got. Oh, yeah. Almost forgot about these, uh, how do you call them? Rear view mirrors. Right here, there. Now, the thing about the bus in the film is that there's a lot of stuff strapped to the sides. Now, I, I really could, sadly, could not do that, at least with accessories and stuff, but I did uh, recreate with uh, some bricks to give that it has some stuff on the sides. Here's the other side. Rolls very nicely, I have to admit. Now, in the film, um, there are four windows, but sadly, um, due to constrictions, I had to only make two windows, sadly. Four windows on each side. But sadly, I had to make only two each side. Here is the back, and uh, let me just take the uh, trailer off for the mo for a moment, so you can get a better look at the back. 
basically, this was a kind of a challenge for me because I had to stack a bunch of pl of, of some some uh, plates on top of each other to get that spiral staircase that the Happiness Hotel bus um, has in the film. There's also a life preserver on the side. Bit of open space. Make a bit of a sneak peek of the interior. Oh, fell over. I was basically trying to give you all a sneak peek of the interior. I will get to that. Before we do, um, let's talk about the trailer. And oh boy, the trailer I was not proud of. And that's because it only appears during the nightlife sequence in the film. Which basically, um, it could be seen being towed by the bus from behind. But you can barely see anything of it throughout the entire sequence. Like, all you can see are the wheels, the, uh, black stuff that are on it, whatever it is. And, uh, it's red headlights on the back. But that was it. Like, I could barely get a good, good glimpse, I mean, a, a good look at each frame of of what the trailer even looks like. Aside from the fact that it was very dark, had red had red uh, lights on the back, wheels it was hitched to the back, and had some chickens on it. So we got two Camillas on there to show that, but yeah. Not proud of how this came out. But yeah, I decided to add it in because I, 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 I thought it was okay. I, I thought it was another okay side build, but anyway. Here's what the interior looks like, and it may not look like much, because we don't really get to see a whole lot, actually. Actually, we never get we never get to see the interior of the bus in the film at any point. We only see the exterior. All, all we know is that it, it fits Muppets, and according to Pops in the film, it's quarantined. It was quarantined, apparently, even though that there were clearly Muppets seen in the back in the film. So literally, Piggy and Kermit literally had no reason to sit at the front, but anyway. Yeah, uh, it, it could fit... It can fit, um... A good amount of characters, actually, in there, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. Because I don't have the rest of the Muppets with me right now. But, um... Yeah, good roomy space, uh... And, that, and, uh, here's a better look at the, uh, inside. Hang on. Better look at the inside. Which basically, there's the front, which you can put Kermit at the front, even though he was not driving the van at any point in the film, Pops was, but Pops was not made into a minifigure, so Kermit's going to be the driver here. Yeah, that's it for the inside. Sorry for focusing so much on it. And last but not least, we have uh, <clears throat> the uh, what should I say? The uh, second decker, I should call it, or the top floor. I'm gonna call it the second decker. But yeah, um, that's pretty much what it is. Before we get to that, though, um, here is the, uh, the luggage rack that sits on top of the, uh, roof of the driver's area, filled with all sorts of luggage and stuff. And I know the in this is not the instrument that hangs over the front of the car in the film. A different instrument is used. I'm not an instrument expert, but this is not the correct instrument, but it's the only kind of Lego instrument I have, so, uh, at least of that type of style. It works as a good substitute if you don't have, but anyway. Basically sits on top of the, uh, driver's area of the courtesy car, so yeah. That's it for that one. The uh, second decker itself, 
is exclusively made slash houses the electric mayhem in the film. It, uh, you can see Animal's drum set sitting there and some instruments, basically Kermit's banjo. He didn't have the banjo here in the film, but I decided to add that in. And uh, a white guitar, which I got from a Lego Ninjago Tournament of Elements set. You know, just a few little clues to let you know this is the Electric Mayhem Band's area. Now, there was uh, some red um, lettering in the film, which read Happiness Hotel on the, on the side, on the top here, but can't recreate that with Lego bricks and stuff, unless I'm an expert, so it's not there, sadly, it's just blank. There's an opening for the stairs to come up here. Here's a top view. And last but not least for this build, um... These bars that were, that basically were, that are on here, they are they they are in the film, and they, I think they they were the last thing I worked on for this Lego build. The last thing. I I originally used plates. For it, I originally used plates, but I thought they looked ugly, so I decided to use some bar methods. So a bar method to basically build it. I think it came up pretty okay. Not film accurate, but okay for what it's supposed to represent in the film. They're very challenging, but I managed to get through it. So yeah, um... Pretty much wraps up this Lego build. And that pretty much does it for this Lego mock. Overall, I think it came up pretty okay. Like always. Not perfect. Not great or spectacular. Just okay. I, I just wanted to basically capture a ma majority of what was made up of the Happiness Hotel courtesy car or bus that was in the film. And I, I, I think it I think it looks pretty okay for what it is. Overall, I thought the minifigure selection, while small, was pretty good. And the little side build with the fabulous baseball diamond was a nice addition. The only thing I don't like about this build is the trailer. Though that's partially because of the fact that one can barely get a good look at how it, the trailer looks in the film itself. But aside from my whole gripe with the trailer, I think the Lego build is pretty okay. As I said before, not perfect, but pretty good. I, I, I think the bus came out well for, for what it is. Anyway, that wraps it up for this Lego mock. What are your thoughts on this build? I'd like to hear them in the comments section below. Please like, comment, subscribe. And I shall see you in more videos. Bye for now, folks.